8864. John and Tom on the call. Well, the lights are sparkling on Broadway. Columbia, Missouri dressed up for the holidays. And on this winter's night that felt more like spring today, they're ready for some hoops. Terrence Phillips and the Tigers taking the floor in front of the home crowd, trying to keep this roll going undefeated at Mizzou Arena this season. The Tigers welcome in the Ospreys from North Florida. They're on a four-game win streak as they continue a remarkably tough non-conference schedule. Welcome to Courtside, everybody. Tom Hart alongside John Sunville. A lot of excitement around this Mizzou program to begin the season. We thought we would be watching one of the top prospects in the game, but without Michael Porter Jr., who's out after back surgery, this has turned into a true team effort for the Tigers. Uh, Tom, it has. Most coaches come in, and, you, and you, when you do a scouting report, you're thinking, who should we stop? Well, take a look at these numbers. Five different Tigers have led this team in scoring. Last time out, Jordan Geist off the bench with 28 points. Now, when that happens, who do you focus on? You're not sure which one to pick. Well, North Florida is a team that's uh, pretty simple to scout. They love to shoot threes. They're going to put it up and put it up often. They can uh, stretch you out defensively. They spot up, they shoot it. They have had games where they've made 20. They've made 16. Last game out when they won, they made 11. They will continue to shoot, especially against this bigger Missouri team. They'll try to pick and pop and see if they can get the big guys away from the rim. They're used to a tough schedule. They played Michigan State and Michigan on back-to-back -back nights, nearly knocked off the Wolverines. Also already played Florida. They got LSU and Mississippi State still to go. It is a murder as well to schedule for the Ospreys. On a four-game win streak, averaging just under 90 points a game in those wins. They do not take a long time to get a shot. At. And here's a quick one and an early one, and it's off the back rim from JT Escobar. The Ole Miss transfer. Blake Harris starting a point for Missouri, and he takes it coast to coast with an N1 cover. Harris, a freshman, uh, has started the last six ball games, and last week against Green Bay, I thought the pace that he played at was up and down quickly, and this is exactly how he started the Green Bay game, put pressure on the opponent. Tigers hit the century mark against Green Bay. First time getting to 100 points since the Frank Haith era back in 2012. Harris can't knock it down. Noah Corkler with the rebound. New starting five for North Florida. Ryan Burkhart slides into a starting role. Garrett Sands tweaked an ankle a couple nights ago, and he's out with that injury. He was in a walking boot today. We hope to have him back on the floor for conference play in a couple of weeks. Inside the Horkman. An extra pass to get it outside. The shot clock will be down to five at least. And now Escobar with the kick. Gondia Rosa for three. And it's <laughs> saved over the top of the backboard with a shot clock violation. Look, that possession notwithstanding, Yvonne Gondia Rosa would be a guy to watch. Their point guard can do a lot of good things uh, for him. Rosa just under 17 points of ballgame, 44% from the three-point line. Escobar will miss the first one, 49% from the three-point line. Uh, Horschler had a shot inside and quickly should have taken that shot. If you have an opportunity, Missouri's a very sound defensive team. Nobody really stands out offensively for Missouri. We talked about the balance scoring. Here's per year with the mid-range jumper. And North Florida opened up basically 3-2 defensively. They're going to see if Missouri can beat them over the top, even though Mizzou had 14 threes in a win against Green Bay. Here's Gondea Rosa, the sophomore from Caguas, Puerto Rico. He had 24 last time out in their win against Florida International. I had uh, this North Florida team against Florida, and that was a night. Now, Florida was great offensively, but the North Florida guys will not back away. They will continue to pick the pace up, try to find open shots. Gondea Rosa, very good. Strong move inside from Jeremiah Tillman, but he leaves it short. Transition three. That one was halfway home for Escobar. Played for Andy Kennedy at Ole Miss to start his career. Barnett will fire a three. That's good. What kind of pace does Missouri want to play at tonight? Uh, they love to push it. They love to attack. They've got good shooters. Uh, the last two ball games, Jordan Barnett has made five threes in both those games. Last five games out, averaging about 19 points a game. The odd part for Jordan Barnett, a, a, a gifted athletic player, no free throws last two games. Has not been going to the rim. Settling for jump shots. Ajit Amino gets it inside, and Aminu to the jump hook. Tillman has battled foul trouble basically his entire career. He fouled out in the Kansas Exhibition game, even though they were allowing seven fouls in that one. 
He has been better the last two times out, staying on the floor. Conzo Martin very good with Jeremiah Tillman's minutes. Uh, the first guy that Coach Driscoll, Matthew Driscoll, North Florida, mentioned to me this morning, he said, my goodness, Tillman's going to be a good one. Yeah. Jim Amino knocks the first one down. Matthew Driscoll, one of 30 Division I head coaches to be all-time wins leader at his current school. Was an assistant coach to Scott Drew at Baylor. Took him to the NCAA tournament a couple years ago, 2015. They won it on their home floor. And he's got him playing a tough, tough road non-conference schedule. They balance that out with some some gimmies at home, so their strength of schedule won't really illustrate how tough it's been for them on the road this year. Well, and the idea to uh, obviously you pay for the whole athletic program when you do those things, but uh, I think the best part what Coach Driscoll does with his players is is the fact that when you play these games and then you get into conference play, uh, you play to the the end of the game, right? You, you don't worry if you're down 10, down 12, or 15 with Michigan State or Florida. You keep playing because you know towards the when you get to conference play, and then all of it is about conference tournament to get the NCAA, in, into the NCAA. They won the Atlantic Sun a couple of years ago in the regular season, but didn't win the tournament, ended up in the NIT. Inside, that's Noah Horkler, and he's got his first bucket. He's coming off of a double-double, 10 and 14, against FIU. Robertson, a very good shooter, graduate transfer for Mizzou. Flashes his first attempt down. I've got a great story for you later about Cassius Robertson and reinventing your form in a jump shot. Good. Anytime I see a zone defense, you watch a shooter like Robertson try to find openings like he did there. Most shooters are pretty crafty at trying to just find where defense shifts. He's been very good. Conzo Martin's first season at Missouri. Previous three seasons had some great NBA players at Cal back in the SEC after a previous stint at Tennessee. Remember, he took a Tennessee team to the Sweet 16 after they played in the first four in Dayton. That was quite a run. Teams are known uh, defensively. They're tough, they're physical, they communicate. He demands a lot from his players. Always impressed the fact that the players respond so positively to it. Take it away. Right to Jordan Geis, who's sharing time at the point with Blake Harris and Cassius Robertson. Another three. And the transfer can't knock the second one down, but Jonte Porter in there for the board. Here's per year. Another mid-range jumper is off, but Barnett's on the glass. Barnett, one of the better athletes in the SEC. They want him to be a little more aggressive around the rim because he's capable. This is a Missouri program that went 2-16 and 16 in the SEC last year. Yes, there's a new coach and an influx of talent. John, they just look like a totally different program. Yeah, they really do. Obviously, everybody talked about Michael Porter Jr., and then he was hurt the first game. When they went out to Utah, Conzo Martin said, I think our guys were looking around to see where Michael was. Mm -hmm. uh, after that game, they've not looked. This is an aggressive team, especially offensively. Defensively, they help each other out. They communicate. Guys off the bench are very positive, bringing positive minutes. That loss to the Utes was their 36th consecutive road loss. They've uh, kicked that losing streak to the end. Thanks in large part to aggression on the boards. Here's Barnett with the putback. And Missouri with an early four-point advantage. When you're in control of your finances, I just feel like you're in control of your future. When we were getting ready to open the business, we shopped around a couple different banks. But when we went to Regents, they treated us the best. Okay. The customer service is, I mean, amazing. Uh -huh. Our Regents banker, Stacy has great advice for the business and our personal finances. You walk in, they treat you right. It makes you just want to keep going back. And we're ready to take our next step. Like to know how to avoid measuring, marking, and bad cuts with your circular saw? With the Craig Rip Cut Saw Guide, you'll make those accurate cuts repeatedly without measuring or marking your boards. The Rip Cut adjusts quickly to your cutting width, making cuts in plywood and MDF fast, easy, and accurate every time. Great projects all start with perfect cuts, so get the Craig Rip Cut Saw Guide today. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Get your Craig Rip Cut at CraigTool.com or these and other fine retailers. Every day, there's something new to discover at Hotlook. New brands and new sales. So you can find the style to fit what's on your mind. Start every day with great style at Hotlook. Have the need of mobile game. Let your rain be 
begin at the need the mobile game. Download now. Well, Missouri dancing its way to a 10 to 6 lead. I know that move. You guys got it. <laughs> you guys got it down. Indeed. Well, Missouri is off to a good start, 8 and 2, and they played an incredible schedule. Their opponents combined win loss is 59 and 28. It's and nobody has a better winning percentage than Missouri's opponents. So the result of that is the number one strength of schedule and the number three RPI in the country. They, they played, they haven't played any gimmies out there. A lot of really good teams in the schedule. And you think of one of their losses to West Virginia. They were up 14 with under five minutes to go and just had a, a frustrating time against the Press Virginia press and the active hands. They didn't get it done, but uh, an impressive schedule. So far, so good. By the way, they get Stephen F. Austin on Tuesday, Ooh. and that's a team that just beat LSU. A solid team. Always good. Yep. conzo has gone pretty deep into his bench already. Cullen Van Leer is already on the floor coming out of that last break. They got three, and they got three shooters against this zone defense on the outside. Robertson Van Leer, who's not shot the ball well this season, and guys coming off the 28 points. The lefty got Dia Rosa again off the glass. That's his specialty move. He's hit one or two of those so far. Geis pushes it ahead. Cashes Robertson for a tough two. Tom, this is the pace Missouri likes to go. Their bigs run the floor well. They go from rim to rim if they can get inside position. They'll try to score, but on many of the times, what you'll notice is how good of offensive rebounding position they do because they run the floor. Nothing doing inside, and Missouri with the takeaway. Porter got his hands on it. Here's Van Leer to dump to Robertson. And a reach in and a takeaway by JT Escobar. Osprey's the other way. Blunt, too strong, and then a foul inside will go against North Florida. Missouri's not the only team playing a very respectable schedule. On the other side, the Ospreys. Going on the road to Cash Shows, Texas, we talked about. Michigan State and Michigan back-to-back -back nights, and they had a chance to win against John Beeline's team. And that was a really good matchup. There's two teams that love the three, so it was a good matchup for them. They got run out against Florida, still got Miami, and then look at this. They got two more SEC opponents coming their way, or at least uh, they're headed their way, LSU and Mississippi State, which just lost for the first time. Porter with the push shot, and that's off the mark. The tough part of this challenge, the fact that they've just won four in a row. Now you come on the road and play a team like Missouri. Porter goes over the back. That will be his first personal foul. An interesting game for Missouri. The, the finals were just done yesterday. So student athletes, uh, one of the tougher things is during finals week. Coaches have to mix different times of practices to make sure guys can get there for in between their finals. There's a relief, obviously, when those were done. You remember that well, Tom, in your days of taking tests, and when you're done. It's all kind of blurry, to be honest with you. <laughs> that last foul correction was on Van Leer, not Porter. And most coaches worry the most about these games right after fight. Student body is gone. Barnett can't knock it down, and it's rebounded by Horkler. North Florida just two for 11 from the floor, and it's another three attempt. They are going to keep firing them. They are 0 for 7 from deep to start this thing off. Geist all the way in off the glass. He's really improved offensively. 28 last time out. He's looking for shots. And the difference is he looks better athletically. He, he fought some injuries a year ago. He hurt his ankle early this season, but he's quicker off his feet, off the dribble. On his jump shot, he is up off his legs better than he's been. Got up 40,000 shots over the course of this summer. Gandia Rosa is the only guy, I believe, that's taken a two from North Florida just, uh, thus far. Barnett will take it. He's not shy. This is a Missouri team playing with a ton of confidence. Got an 11 to nothing roll, and then it's a double digit lead for the Tigers. 16 to 6 for this. Very proud program, and when we return, we're going to step into the hot tub time machine, take it back a couple decades, and take a look back at the history of Missouri basketball. Take it back to the 80s. I wonder what that might be. And the 90s. 
hydro moisture or microhydration. Oh, hey, uh, for my hair, should I go pomade or gel? The blue one. Oh, is this good for razor burn? Those guys don't know what you need. I do, and I'll bring it right to your house. Is that my wife? Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Get a DSC starter set for just five bucks. Join Dollar Shave Club today. I'm not cut out for an office job, so I prefer working in public cafes and in co-working places. Sharing same Wi-Fi spots can lead to some really serious invasions. VPN gives me peace of mind when I use unsecured public networks. NordVPN secures your internet traffic with strong encryption. It offers easy access to hundreds of servers. Get NordVPN for only $4 a month. Visit nordvpn.com forward slash TV now. Well, Missouri's defense has held North Florida scoreless over the last 428. It's helped the Tigers build a 16-6 lead. Let's take a look back at Missouri basketball history. Norm Stewart back in the 80s took the team to the tournament eight times, three times to the Sweet 16. In the 90s, six more tournament appearances, the Elite 8 and 94, Melvin Booker in that great run. In the 2000s, five different head coaches, nine tournament appearances, a couple of uh, Elite Eights. Usually our producer, Ian Gruca, shows us what hey, we're going to see. Hey, this hey, is all hey, a surprise. Hey. This guy from Blue Springs, Missouri, he sharing the basketball, a little Kemper Arena action. We didn't see any of these highlights. Is that where that game is? You know, the old, uh, you're right, that's good, the old Kemper Arena. And that was the old Hearns Fieldhouse, which is still up. Next door, and you know, partner, those shorts are, are <laughs> coming back. And when I moved uh, back to Columbia, uh, obviously it's a great university to go to. Had a lot of fun playing basketball here. Well, you know, a lot of people start talking about Michael Porter Jr. joining this program, and the parlay that was is he's going to bring other great players with him. Yeah. He's going to be a recruiting hotbed, and a guy can instigate that. But at the same time, it uh, had a lot of people reminiscing about you and another guy that you came in with, Steve Stepanovich. Yeah, yeah, I lived in Kansas City area. Steve Stepanovich was in the St. Louis area. We communicated. Now, we didn't have cell phones back then, but uh, we talked. We came to the same place and had fun. But, you know what? Someone else is from Columbia, and we welcome you back home. <laughs> and when, uh, we go back to the old Rockbridge <laughs> Bruin days when I was trying to think, where should I take my kids and what school should they go to? And I thought, gosh, let me get some pictures of Tom Hart. Wow. Who, did you provide no, this? No, 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 no. Well, your wife's really terrific. Oh, this is unbelievable. When's Welcome this? home. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my jersey's not in the rafters of any Could gym. be up there somewhere. Yeah. Something. That, that's fantastic. Rockbridge Brewers. What are your memories? Uh... You know, specifically? Yeah, play oh, I got a great, I got a great memory, by the way. Uh, I went to Red Deer Sports in uh, 1984, and I picked up this uh, poster. I don't know if you're aware of it. Yeah, two guys out there uh, trying to make some money after their uh, eligibility had run up. And so Donna Beckett was the one who took me and the Beckett boys to Red Weir. We got them autographed, and uh, that was in my... Only cost a couple bucks, right? Yeah. You yeah. we were trying to, you know what, after that senior year, you're trying to think, how you make a dollar? <laughs> well, I still owe Mrs. Beckett, so uh, she's the one who paid for that. And there's Jordan Barnett on the inside. You know, it's fun to flash back like that, and we were both in this building for the Iowa State game. It was sold out, first game of the season, a lot of anticipation, and it just had that feeling like Missouri basketball was back. And, and you know, that feeling, and right after that game, I went and did a South Carolina game. And Frank Martin, uh, you know, we were talking, I was talking to Frank, he goes, the fun part of Mizzou basketball, and, and it was like that in this arena when Frank was at Kansas State. And so Frank said, the SEC will love it, the fact that Missouri's good, fans are in the stands, fans are alive. He's right. I think the SEC will uh, appreciate the teams come in here and uh, how tough a place this will be to win games. It's a 15 to nothing run for Missouri. Talk with Matthew Driscoll about that a little bit. He saw it when he was here with Baylor back in the Big 12 days. Went back to the Pressy brothers and Kim English, Marcus Denman, that squad. Mm -hmm. That was the last year of the Big 12. Geist. And a foul inside will go against North Florida and Ryan Burkhart. Freshman from St. Augustine, Florida. They got his uh, first start tonight. Had battled his way through a foot injury early in the season. Geis gets a breather here. Lucanzo Martin is um, doing a great job rotating guys in. 
And the challenge for North Florida, they, they are not as deep on their bench. And the pace right now that Missouri is playing at is very difficult for North Florida to stay up, even though they like to push the ball and shoot threes. They're being forced to get back quickly defensively. North Florida fifth in the country with just shy of 12 threes per game tonight. They are 0 for 7. But they are streaky. They, they're going to knock a couple down at some point. I love this kid's game. The leader in the post. Preseason uh, A-Sun all-conference team. Only a sophomore. Here's Robertson. And he hits another triple. 60 seconds. Guy hit 98 of the last year. Canisius. Originally from Toronto. 18 to nothing. Mizzou run. Tillman finds Harris. Those are two of the guys part of this great Missouri recruiting class, thanks in large part to Michael Porter Jr. signing with the Tigers. And, of course, his brother, John Tay Porter. Harris is still kind of learning the speed and the flow of the lead guard position. I think so. Uh, you know, game in, game out is different. Uh, there will be more challenging games for him. Uh, they had some challenges against West Virginia. Again, a, not, a notch up, right? West Virginia's ranked 11th in a lot of polls, so there will be challenges, and it's the hardest position to learn. I think that they've tried to tell him the last few ball games is just play. Don't think so much, even though you've got to think about a lot of things. But just play. Pick up the pace. Rely on your teammates to make shots and make, make decisions with the ball in the half court. So speaking of shots, Cassius Robertson goes to the free throw line. He's got three coming his way. Cassius Robertson's from Toronto, and he spent... Four seasons at Canisius. He redshirted his first year, and it was his choice, John, because he realized his shot was broken, and he needed a year to fix his jump shot. And he said, I didn't learn by watching videos. I didn't learn by trying to emulate anybody else. He said it was all trial and error. I needed, knew I needed to get my elbows in. My left elbow was way out. My right elbow was flaring out. So slowly but surely, refined it. And the beauty of it is he said, what I told myself is I wanted to find something that was simple and repeatable. Does that sound like a shooter's mentality? <laughs> yeah, you want to keep it easy because the more confusing you make it, the more difficult it is. There are many ways to shoot a ball, but what most great shooters have is their release point, and that's what he does well. If you broke it down, you would think his left hand's a little odd because it sometimes sits on top of the ball, not on the side. But again, his release is so good, and again, self-taught guys that can make themselves shooters. But it's interesting when a shooter like this talks about he made himself what he wasn't. There are most, a lot of great shooters were great shooters always. The recognition that whatever form he had was broken and wasn't going to serve him to get to the next level. Sacrificing, he said, it was really frustrating. I'd, I'd go and shoot at the gym and shoot and shoot, and if it didn't work, I'd go home and I'd write in a journal what worked what didn't so I could go back and work on it more and he goes I, I wasn't very nice to be around at those times because I was so upset when it wasn't working there's Tillman followed his own miss Missouri's defense has been sensational they've held North Florida to just two for 18 shooting and there's their first three of the night and it comes from Nora Hortler who's hit 30% of his triples Hortler another guy that can spot up Face up, shoot it if you give him space. Interesting part, partner, they will not stop shooting those threes, and that's the way, only way they can get into it. You know, Barnett is so good off the dribble. They want to see more of that from him. Terrence Phillips trying to reach in there. Loose ball, and we'll decide... That will stay this way with the Ospreys. Wednesday, 7 Eastern. James Madison's moving to the hardwood. Remember, they got a big football game going on right now tonight, and they take down Mike White's Florida Gators in Gainesville right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Florida was off to a sensational start this year. They lost to Duke in the PK-80 after blowing a late lead as Terrence Phillips gets some attention on his right calf, it looks like. They came back from Portland, Florida, did leading the nation in scoring. They're averaging just a hair under 100 points a game. Got blown out by Florida State. They lost another game that same week, and then they lost today to Clemson. 
Yeah, I'm surprised because I, I still think it's a team that has a chance to be a Final Four type team with the offensive weapons. Now, defensively, they haven't been as good. And you know what? You never know what's going on inside a locker room sometimes amongst players. Yeah. But uh, Mike Krzyzewski said that maybe the best team they'll play all season. Yeah. They certainly look like a different team than they did in Portland. They need to recapture some of the Oregon magic per year. Lost it after putting it on the floor. 27-9 Mizzou. Well, back to 1992. <laughs> could could be a prom picture, could be the senior picture. But the reaction? I saw this, yeah. My hair changed. <laughs> <laughs> Heisman Playmaker versus the SEC's top dog. The defending champs versus the avenging tide. Oklahoma, Georgia at 5 and Clemson, Alabama at 845. New Year's Day on ESPN. Hey, think you've seen it all in razors? Get ready to see shaving in a whole new light. Introducing the all-new Tough Blade Pro, the breakthrough in precision shaving from Microtouch with a laser guide for perfect alignment, a built-in spotlight, and vibrating handle. This isn't just a new razor. This is a better way to shave, period. Fitted with the finest German-engineered stainless steel blades, smart space to rinse out cleaner, and each blade has a micro-thin non-stick coating to help last up to four times longer than ordinary blades. Now, you can have an entire year's worth of shaving, all for just $24.99. Call 1-800-989-6731 or on the web at toughbladepro.com. Or you can text to order. Just text BLADE to 246810. Order right now, and we'll include our lighted micro-touch trimmer, please. Tough Blade Pro. See the quality, see the value, and now, see the light. 27-9, Missouri leading North Florida moments ago. Terrence Phillips, Missouri point guard, helped off the floor. One of three guys have been seeing action at the point position for Missouri, and he's limping his way back to the locker room. Junior from Orange County, California. One of the uh, verbal leaders for Conzo Martin. Obviously, Phillips' minutes uh, as a freshman started every game. About 30 minutes a game, similar as a sophomore now this year, just under 13 a game. But Conzo Martin said uh, he brings energy every day. Been great for the team. He said the two vocal guys, even if, a, if it's an off day in practice, uh, are Phillips and the freshman Tillman. He said they're high energy guys, they make every practice good. We had the conversation with Conzo today and uh, asked him specifically, what are you looking for in a point guard? Because uh, the guys he yeah. uses all do something a little bit different. Really four different guys run the point this year. He stressed the value of a possession, and it's almost as if he would rather have, as Gandia Rosa rattles his first three. He just wants a guy who's going to protect the basketball, number one, above and above anything else. There are guys with higher ceilings, and there's guys on this team that pretty will get some easy look at the but if you turn the ball over, if you can't run the offense, he doesn't want you on the floor. Well, where his training is from Gene Cady, right, at Purdue. Take care of the basketball, get high-quality shots, defend on the other end. But there's no sense. If you throw it away, no matter how fancy you are, you don't get enough shot attempts. Tillman left his feet, but he'll still get in there and rip down the board after the miss by Emmanuel Lambright, freshman from Sarasota. Harris running the point now for Missouri. He was originally committed to Washington, like the Porter brothers, before Lorenzo Romar was let go. Missouri too big and physical to guard man to man tonight for North Florida, so they're in a zone, but uh, the Tigers have no problem picking the defense apart. Dia Rosa played at Huntington Prep, got to face one of his former teammates, Miles Bridges, when they faced off with Michigan State a few weeks ago. Bridges was one of five Spartans in double figures today. Tom Izzo's team is off to another great start. There's some upsets in college basketball today. 
And Southpaw Kevin Perrier getting some looks inside. Solid pass against a zone defense from Van Leer out front. If you don't, even if you're in a zone defense, if you don't put pressure on the passer, a guy that can look and, and pick apart, uh, it's difficult. Perrier, one of those veteran players, just a solid uh, junior season. All freshman team in the SEC two years ago. Where's he from? Uh, a really beautiful place called Blue Springs, just down to I-70. <laughs> you know, the thing about Perrier, he just he, he kind of does everything. Yeah. Not a superstar in any of it, but he is a solid, solid player in this league. It will be a tough got to deal with when league play starts. It's an interesting uh, study year to year. Kevin Perrier looks like more of an offensive threat this year based, I think, primarily on the guys that are around him and on the floor with him. That yeah, makes it easier. He had more talent around him. Uh, uh, things happen. And then, again, the pace they're playing. One of the things Perrier does well is, again, he's a rim-to-rim -rim runner. He, he sprints down the other end, see if he can get looks. Very solid face-up shooter. Has increased his three-point shooting out to over 40%, 43%. First two years, just at 30%. North Florida, 2 of 11 from 3. That one challenged. Geist comes out of there with it. Tigers pushing a 4 on 2. Cashes Robertson. Tom, what makes Missouri so solid on the defensive end is their bigs are active. Not only long and tall. I mean, Tillman, 6'10", blocked that shot in the quarter. Dante Porter does the same thing at 6'11", nearly three blocks a game. And sometimes they're outside. They're so quick to the basketball. How has Tillman solved his foul issues lately? You know what? He has stayed on the floor, doesn't buy into uh, ball fakes, more patient. Jeremiah Tillman! That's his first bucket. That's an area that offensively he'll have to get better at, facing up. Big men uh, no longer are just post players in, in the game of basketball today. I watched the Sixers play last night on TV, and every one of the big guys are out shooting threes. Yeah, well, they also had a big guy running the point, right? Yeah. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Big Ben. Missouri working against that North Florida zone. You want to find openings. And anytime you can get right to the middle, right around the free throw line where Jonte Porter finds it, now you can turn, you can face up, you might have a shot. Teammates can have openings. It's really funny. North Florida's not afraid to give you looks at two. Their opponents are second in the nation, hitting 62% of their two-point field goal attempts this year. They, they are willing to trade twos for threes. There's Tillman inside coming off of a double-double in this green bay when he went for 12 and 11. Now, the only way that, 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 that this will change for North Florida, and, and, and Matthew Driscoll knew this, is they've got to put bodies and block out and get a guy like Tillman away from the rim. Tillman had him stripped on his way up. Good hands by Trip Day, freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. Here's Aminu. Both of his brothers played major conference basketball, and he's able to draw the foul on Tillman. The freshman charged with his second. 3.34 to go in his quickly moving first half. All Mizzou early. Remember when Christmas was magical? When milk and cookies turned into presents under the tree. Let's get back there. At Bass Pro Shop Santa's Wonderland, elves will be there doing elf stuff. Kids can get a free picture with Santa, and you can save on great gifts for the whole family. Like Bass Pro Men's and Kids Outdoor Watches for under $10. Redhead Men's Flannel and Fleece Line Jeans for under $30. Plus free shipping with no minimum order. Is the Southeastern Conference where you go away to college? Not exactly. Yes, we come from all corners, from all histories and experiences. And even though there are unique customs, new favorite foods, and new languages, the SEC is not really where you go away to college. It's where you come home. Because here, it just means more. 
All right, we're back here in Charlotte Studios. Antoine Walker, Jimmy Dykes, Peter Burris. We're bringing in true talent here, guys. I, I, listen, I've been hanging out with you all day long. I want to hang out with John Sunbull and Tom Hart because they're having fun down in Columbia, boys, aren't you? Uh, we always have fun in Columbia. Hadn't been a real fun day for the SEC today, though. One of those kind of December swoons we expect a lot more from the league. You know, challenges, uh, especially teams that these are the games that become the bubble team, right? Yeah. Georgia losing to UMass. All of a sudden, if Georgia plays well, that UMass thing looms. But uh, you know what? The league's better. And if the league's better, the RPI is higher. So once league starts, you get better chances for wins. Yeah. Peter, what have you guys been talking about today in regards to Florida? What's going on with the Gators from your perspective? Yeah, in fact, I'll let us do. Antoine, what are, you, what are you seeing from the Gators? Just a different team. It's not the same Florida team we saw in the last couple of years that have been very stingy defensively. They don't have the defensive pedigree that they've had in the last couple of years. Offensively, they're not as deep as, as a lot of teams in the SEC game. They're about six deep. Mm -hmm. um, they can play right now. So they struggle sometimes in situations because guys are playing heavy minutes. So they're a ways away from where they were uh, last year. John, John, I heard you. I think you're talking about Florida uh, when we're talking about sometimes you don't know what's going on in the locker room, the chemistry of teams, the makeup of teams. Look at a guy like Kayvon Allen, who last year was the first or second option. Now he's maybe the fourth or the fifth option. Yeah. You just don't know about the, the chemistry. Talk, talk about that a little bit, the importance of that with a team and maybe even with Florida. You know, Jimmy, you've been around it as a coach and as a player and you've seen as a broadcaster. You, you just don't know what's going on practice-wise in the locker room, how guys get along. And chemistry is huge at, at this level. Uh, how do guys get along? And when you take which offensive players get to take shots and which guy doesn't. So if some new guy comes in and he gets more attempts, a guy like Kayvon Allen gets less, what, what happens now? The tough part, as you know, Jimmy, is the coaches have to figure all that out. Get everybody on the same page. And if they do, I think we all probably feel this Florida team can still be one of the best in the country. And, and you're talking chemistry, and I'll let you guys get back to the game, but that's something that Missouri's showing right now. No Michael Porter Jr., but this team's really kind of, kind of grinding together and getting it done. Hey, Peter, before we let you guys go, I do have a question for Jimmy. Now, we have seen this building be rocking this season, and he was here on the call for the Iowa State game when it was sold out. Jimmy, tell everybody what happened your previous trip inside Mizzou Arena. <laughs> uh -oh. What was the yes, story here? I was the, I was the head coach at Arkansas, and uh, we hit a shot at the buzzer at halftime to give us our 11th point. And felt good about it. Like high five and high five and John running off the floor at halftime. We've got eleven. Yeah, I think we're down thirty-three to eleven. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Tom. Hey, now you get to hang out with us over here. Though. That's why I'm sitting here right now. That's why I'm here. Our chemistry is not near as good as the Missouri Tigers, by the way. I'm just telling you, we got issues on set. Uh, all's well that ends well. Thanks, fellas. We'll see you in about two and a half minutes. 35-17. I think maybe Matthew Driscoll kind of felt that as well here in the first half of Missouri. Went on that run to go up 25-6, and Van Leer splashes down a triple. You know, we don't want to harp on it, but Peter Burns said it. And watching this Missouri team, chemistry, how they play together. Uh, we already showed early on five different lead scores throughout the season. Nobody seems to care, seems to mind where the shots come from, who, who gets the shots. Conzo Martin continues to move guys in and off the bench. Uh, and he's got an energy to this squad that is really contagious. Plus, look at this, Tom. You've got some players, not the new ones, but the guys who've been around didn't win a lot of games last couple of years. And winning is fun. And it's more fun to go to practice. It's more fun to, to play. It's more fun like a Jordan Geist to have a game like 28 uh, and not worry about minutes from game to game. So this is an entirely different squad than, than anybody saw a year ago. Barnett pulls down the board. Here's Geis leading the break. Dante Porter for three. And now Barnett tracks it down. Talking about unselfish play, there's also been really crisp ball movement from this team. Barnett can't finish the flush. The flush. And they're playing at least partially a different half-court style than they would if Michael Porter Jr. was on the floor. And I do know this. North Florida is not shooting the ball well. But... Yeah, Mizzou defensively are getting all their shooters, right? There, there's not an open one. The Escobar's running the floor, and most shooters think if we're on a break, I'm going to get an open three. No one's going to challenge that one. Yeah. Van Leer got to it. Here's Geist. Let's go back to Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, a difference with Michael Porter Jr.'s on the floor in the scrimmage against Kansas. Could dominate the ball a little bit, right? He's an offensive talent, going to be an NBA player. And, and, and when you have a player that dominates the ball a little bit, everybody kind of gets caught standing, watching. 
Missouri team doesn't stand much offensively. They, they move the ball, they cut, they share it. Very nice way to play. Under 20 seconds to go before the half. Where's Carl Edwards at? Because this is some NASCAR type speed here in this first half. <laughs> a reach in to stop the clock. And I'll put guys to, uh, well, Wednesday's oh, National yeah, Signing Day. Ari right, Gene and ESPN National Recruiting Coordinator Craig Hubbard will be provide wall to wall coverage of all 14 SEC schools. Find out where the nation's top football recruits will land starting at noon Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Early signing day now, December 20th. Wow, that's early. Mm -hmm. Missouri just found an O-line coach, brought in Florida's guy, now looking for an offensive coordinator. Harris kicks Barnett to beat the buzzer. Nice touch, Jordan Barnett with a 13-point first half. North Florida with a 19-point first half. Newest points and a half this season for the Ospreys. Gonzo Martins Tigers have had nine different players score in this 46 to 19 lead for Missouri. Jordan Barnett has been all over the floor for the Tigers, a Texas transfer back in the scoring column. Let's get you back to the studio with the fellas. All right, thank you, Tom. 46-19, uh, the only thing that was ugly in that first half was seeing John Sunvold wear those really short shorts way back in the day. Good, uh, good start for the Tigers. Jimmy Dykes, Antoine Walker, Peter Burns. Uh, Wow. I, listen, I, I thought they'd have success against North Florida, but what was it in that first half that really kind of jumped out to you? I, Missouri's really good. Yep. When you always watch them defensively, they, they, they tag shooters. They're always seeing ball. They're seeing man. They're in a stance. They got their the, the old-fashioned point your pistols from Conzo Martin, his days with Gene Cady and Eddie Sutton and all the man-to-man -man principles. They, they're, they have great chemistry. We're talking about we're not sure where Florida's chemistry is. Missouri is a together basketball yep. team. They share it. The best shot is the open shot. Yeah, and you just alluded to it. Nine guys, you know, obviously the score already for Missouri. But I'm, I'm with you, Jimmy. The defense has been amazing tonight. 21% yeah. from the field, 20 from the three-point line. And then, obviously, the rebounding margin. Um, you know, 31-17, to 17, Missouri is winning that game. Taking care of business when they have to. This is how you come in and beat teams you're supposed to beat. Yeah, you don't, you don't play with your food uh, right before <laughs> holidays, right? You, I, you I do, do take to it. Wait, wait a minute. I do. Uh, no, about? listen, I know. You need to clean up the green room, honestly. It's embarrassing. Uh, Virginia Tech actually led Kentucky 47-41. And by the tone of my voice saying they actually did that means you know what happened in the second half, right? Hamadou Diallo saying, I can shoot the three from the wing. Got it. Yeah, Kentucky moved the ball well. At times they got double team, but they read the double team well. K Kentucky took what the defense gave them today. Yeah. When they had short closeouts, they knocked down threes. When they were crowded, they drove the ball, and they got it around the rim. Take a look at Diallo from the corner. Looking like a Antoine Walker there. 93 <laughs> to 86. Twan, what do you see in your former team? How much, how much should I be buying into the Wildcats right here, right now? You see a team that, that plays together, they do it by committee. You never know who's going to be the guy. You're not selling me enough. Give me a bigger sell. Why? Am I, <laughs> are you not sold on them, or is that the deal? I'm sold on them to be a, a team that's going to go deep in the tournament. I mean, they're just too talented not to. Okay. I mean, obviously, what I do like about them, they do do it by committee. That means they're sharing the basketball. Mm -hmm. They don't care who gets off. Um, Kevin Knox seems to be the one guy because of his ability to make the three-point shot that scores the most points. But everybody else, they just do, they do it by committee. They're getting seven, eight guys scoring the basketball. Today they get four guys in double figures, two guys over 20 points. So they got... He's I like to I like, sell it on me. He's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm sell I like the collective group we got <laughs> going. I ain't sold yet because <laughs> the defense ain't where I need to be. Yeah, I, okay. I, 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 I'm sold because of what I saw today. They beat okay. a really good Virginia Tech team. You like team. them, right? I like Virginia Tech a lot. Uh, they're a high-powered offensive team, and Buzz is a head coach. That they're about toughness and wills to win and, and, and never backing away from the fight. They're an older team, and Kentucky handled all those things. Okay. I like Kentucky's defense today. I, I know, I'm, I'm with um, my man Antoine because they did give up 80 points, but they also forced a lot of turnovers. They got out and ran off for their turnovers. And I, I've said all day long, if Kentucky can be a team that makes seven threes a game, yep. when at the end of the SEC play, if we look at the stat sheet, and Kentucky average making seven threes, that's probably your SEC champion. I can't wait to see this one in New Orleans uh, two days before Christmas. Antoine, I, those, are always, those are always fun games that Kentucky gets involved in against UCLA. 
Yeah, this, it'll be a good, good non-conference game for him. Obviously, the rivalry game against Louisville, I'm looking more forward to that game. I think Louisville's very good. I asked you about them earlier, Jimmy. Yeah. Was Louisville a very good team? But I believe that Louisville will be a bigger test than UCLA. How about that turnaround? Louisville on the 29th, yeah. Georgia on the 31st. Uh, speaking of pretty good teams, Auburn, they're 8-1, first time since 2011, and they get Mustafa Heron back in this game. And uh, he, he was out last on Wednesday for back spasms, but... Getting it kind of done. Heron scored 13 of the 16 points in the first half, and Auburn just dominated in the middle. Middle Tennessee came back late. Poor Spencer with the dunk, but Auburn would hold on. 76-70 victory to improve to 9-1. Castle Robertson, we knew that somebody was going to have to step up for this Tigers team, and everybody's doing it tonight. Tigers, healthy lead over North Florida at half. I'm the world's greatest Douglas fir. I'm the perfect shape. I'm the perfect color. My scent, like making love to a lumberjack. But halfway home, my twine gets loose. <laughs> and your cut rate insurance might not pay for this. So get all state, where you can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? This holiday, what are you going to give? Give 30 more seconds on your Peloton. Give it your best morning, noon, or night. Give it up for New York's best instructors live. Give them something to see. Give yourself a thousand other riders to push you to the top. Give them the one thing that will make them give it all. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. They laughed when I asked the Mint about a 1964 Morgan Silver dollar, but then four famous coin experts were allowed into one of the Mint's unsearched vaults. There, they found the tools for a 1964 Morgan Silver dollar. Now, history is being made, announcing the special striking of the Cook Islands non-circulating legal tender 1964 Morgan dollar, clad in 71 milligrams of .999 pure silver. You can reserve your very own Cook Islands 1964 Morgan dollar with the design elements of the U.S. government original frosted against a mirrored background. Final issue price was to be set at $39, but now you can reserve one for only $9.95. There is a strict limit of five coins per order. Don't delay. Reserve your very own copy of the 1964 Morgan dollar. Call now. To order, call 1-800-591-7255. Strict limit of five coins per caller, call 1-800-591-7255 or log on to 1964morgans.com. Welcome back to SEC Halftime Report. Antoine Walker, Jimmy Dykes, Peter Burns. How about this? What one, not two, not three, not four, but eight teams in the top 50 in RPI. That is, that's not too bad right there, boys. Yeah, I talked about that earlier, about... I believe we're going to get seven teams in the tournament, and, and I, I still believe that. Obviously, it's not a great day today for the, for the SEC, but I still believe with the with the depthness of it, and, and once we get into the tournament, I mean uh, conference play, people will see how really good these teams really are. Yeah, yeah. It, this I mean, you look at Florida falling to Clemson, Old Miss, LSU falling to Stephen F. Austin. All three of those games are winnable games, Jimmy. Well, I tell you who who did work today was mm -hmm. Auburn, yeah. beating Middle Tennessee State, who came in with a 13 RPI. That's going to be a terrific win for Auburn. I know they're 9-1, and one, and I think they'll have one loss when SEC play begins. Uh, uh, Auburn's really good. Yeah. And we talked about the distractions that that staff and those kids have had to deal with. They're without the Wiley kid, who is arguably one of the top three or four centers in the SEC, and their best three-point shooter from last year, Purifoy. Purifoy. With, with that being said, they still have some dudes now. They put on the floor, and they play so hard and so well together. So I, I, I was very impressed with Auburn's win today. I think you look at the teams that really lost today, only Florida is probably really a tournament team. Um, okay. I think, you know, I think it's going to be tough for Georgia, you know, Ole Miss, and obviously LSU to get in there. Um, I think obviously these losses today hurts those teams as, mm -hmm. you know, once you get later down the season. They were going to they were yeah. gonna have to have some incredible run in conference play regardless. Yeah, but if you look at teams, Auburn's yeah. win, 
You know, yeah. Kentucky's win. It was a big win. Yeah. You know, obviously look at Missouri right now, taking care of business, showing people that they're separating themselves. Mississippi State right now is kind of one of those bubble teams that, that Arkansas, needs we don't Arkansas, know. Arkansas yeah. is taking care of business right yeah. now, even though the game's not finished. So you think about those teams, the yeah. solid teams that we believe that's yeah. going to be in the tournament did take care of yeah. business today. The, the, the loss the loss is going to resonate is LSU yeah. at home, mm. at the buzzer. That, that could be the one that maybe keeps them out of the NIT, which is crazy to say on December the 16th. These Tigers are looking good. Kevin Purrier with the slam. They're up 27 and a half. Second half coming up after the break. Finding the right cutting tool for the right job is tough. But finding one that cuts the tough stuff is impossible. Not anymore. Introducing Multicut, the three-in-one tool that's a precision slicer, wire cutter, and utility knife all in one. Now, cutting the really tough stuff is really simple. The secret is the mechanical action of its offset pivot point power blade that creates superior torque and leverage for incredibly easy operation. Cut a steel cable in a snap. Slice a garden hose just like that. And cut PVC pipe in nothing flat. Multicut is great for trim and molding and perfect for crafting products. Projects. Cut flooring for a custom fit and trim vinyl blinds with perfect precision. Other tools just can't cut it. But even this 10,000-pound strength tow rope is no match for Multicut. It's strong enough to cut tree limbs, but gentle enough to trim flowers. Multicut has a titanium-coated wire cutter for wire in a range of gauges and sizes. Repair an old battery cable. Slide the adjustable base. And now it's a utility knife to open shipping boxes in a flash or product clamshells lightning fast. Slice full sheets of paneling in seconds. Cut carpeting with ease. And cutting drywall is a breeze. With a razor-sharp stainless steel blade, sure grip handles, and an industrial steel chassis, Multicut can take a beating and still make the cut. No matter how you slice it, Multicut is the sharpest tool in the shed and the easiest to use. Extra blades store in the handle, and the blade locks to store safely. It's a precision slicer, wire cutter, and utility knife, all in one. And right now, it's yours for just $29.99. Order now, and you can get a second Multicut. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship it to you free. Get two Multicut cutting tools. That's a $100 value, all for one low price. Get the Multicut 3-in-1 and get the job done. Call now. To order the Multicut for $29.99 plus processing and handling, call 1-800-738-9345 or order online at buymulticut.com. That's buymulticut.com. Order now. Dr. James Birchler is one of the nation's leading experts in maize genetic research at the University of Missouri and winner of the 2017 SEC Professor of the Year Award. We study a variety of aspects of corn genetics. We build them out to have properties that would be useful in the field. One has to be hopeful that we can develop these technologies to elevate the standard of living for, for more people. Dr. James Birchler, SEC Professor of the Year. Jordan Barnett can flat out ball. Good ball movement there from the Tigers. They like it in Como. Second half coming up after this break. Missouri up 27. It happened a fortnight ago. No matter how many games Rowdy bought, Jesse always played more on Game 5. Jesse's here. Game on. Feeling lucky, Rowdy? I reckon. Go to Gamefly.com and play all the new and classic games. Choose from over 9,000 titles with free shipping and no late fees. Start your 30-day free trial at Gamefly.com. Product shown ready to be thrown. Rowdy never had a chance, because Jesse has Gamefly. Save Club. It's going to change your life. Well, the shave part of your life. Try shave butter and a razor at dollarshaveclub.com. Is the Southeastern Conference where you go away to college? Not exactly. Yes, we come from all corners, from all histories and experiences. And even though there are unique customs, new favorite foods, and new languages, the SEC is not really where you go away to college. It's where you come home. Because here, it just means more. 
They laughed when I asked the Mint about a 1964 Morgan Silver dollar, but then four famous coin experts were allowed into one of the Mint's unsearched vaults. There, they found the tools for a 1964 Morgan Silver dollar. Now, history is being made, announcing the special striking of the Cook Islands non-circulating legal tender 1964 Morgan dollar, clad in 71 milligrams of .999 pure silver. You can reserve your very own Cook Islands 1964 Morgan dollar with the design elements of the U.S. government original frosted against a mirrored background. Final issue price was to be set at $39, but now you can reserve one for only $9.95. There is a strict limit of five coins per order. Don't delay. Reserve your very own copy of the 1964 Morgan dollar. Call now. To order, call 1-800-591-7255. Strict limit of five coins per caller, call 1-800-591-7255 or log on to 1964morgans.com. <clears throat> Missouri used a 20 to nothing run early in the first half to take control of this one. We get set for the second half. 46 to 19 is the Mizzou lead. Tigers defense holding, holding the Ospreys to just 20% shooting. Tom Hart alongside John Sunbold. A lot of good things, a lot of balanced offense for this Missouri team tonight. Yeah, we talked about in the first half the fact that they share the basketball, they look for each other, they're a good shooting team. So when you do that, it makes you tough to defend. You can't focus on one guy. Missouri is pretty good. Let's take a look at our good hands play of the game brought to you by Allstate. And here's a guy who's been all over the floor tonight so far for Missouri. Jordan Barnett. Yeah, Barnett's been really solid. Six of nine from the field in a variety of ways. 13 points. He also has seven rebounds. And he can shoot it. He's athletic enough to finish around the rim. Uh, the coaching staff still wants him to be more aggressive in attacking. But he's got everything you want on the offensive end. Nine different players have scored for the Tigers. Barnett leading the way with a Baker's dozen. Seven have a board. Barnett's got seven of them to lead the way. And five different players have assisted on a field goal. Jonte Porter has three of them. Meanwhile, for North Florida, they, they're on pace in terms of three-point attempts. Matthew Driscoll's team having a hard time knocking them down tonight. They've only made three. The average 12 makes a game. Fifth in the country in three-point attempts per game with 30. Gandia Rosa can't knock down the three. He's been a real scoring threat for them. Played at Huntington Prep and then junior college at College of Central Florida. Back to the 1-3-1 one, one zone defense across the top and it drops back. But was very effective the first half, Tom, with finding open seams by passing the ball. Didn't spend a lot of time dribbling right there and that catch by Tillman. Tigers in the first half shot 49% from the floor, 43% from three. Gonzo Martin's team only with four trips to the free throw line, but when you have a 46 to 19 lead, not too much of a concern. Gandia Rosa, which pass the dump off leads to an easy deuce. Many times what happens defensively on that, you're, you're thinking so much about the scouting report that we defend the three line. They have two Missouri Tigers run out to a player on the outside. You can easily slip in and get a layup. Ospreys will continue to try to find openings on the outside, but they've been challenged every time they've Shooting. taken a shot. And Jordan Barnett on an offensive tackle. Transferred in from Texas, and there were times last year where Kim Anderson challenged Jordan Barnett. It was about effort, and you talked about winning and wanting to come to the gym and wanting to practice and wanting to play. This guy looks like he wants to be on the floor this year. It was more for Jordan Barnett about the length of time that you could maintain being a good player, right? It, it, we don't need you for three minutes. We need you for eight-minute stretches or six and be aggressive. And now in his senior season, as you mentioned, a, a from St. Louis went to Texas to play for Rick Barnes, transferred here. I think he can be an all-league player. That's how talented he is. Another good look inside for the Ospreys, and Barnett commits the foul. It'll be Jordan Barnett's first. I will say that the value of having a guy like Barnett, the last five games averaging about 19 points a game, is he doesn't go searching for shots. He doesn't force a lot of bad shots. There'll be times he'll have some ill-advised passes. Uh, Conzo Martin's talked about the turnovers that have bothered this Missouri team. Not so many tonight, only five. But Jordan's one of those guys without 
handling the ball, but will just make a loose pass. Mm -hmm. Martin trying to say, hey, just be more focused every time down the floor. And if he uses his ability to be a threat to score all the time, that, that makes him even more of a, a, even a better offensive player. Aminu knocked down both free throws. Oh, look at that ball move. An extra pass. The word during practice is one more. One more pass to find an open man. That has been a uh, constant theme once Conzo Martin took over this program. And there's one more. And one more for Cassius Robertson. These are good looks, though. I mean, misses, last two, but good looks. Coaching staff for this Tiger team will like those shot attempts. Blocked by Porter. Missouri had three blocks in the first half, and Jonte using his 6'11 frame to reject that one. Jonte Porter plays um, with a calmness. Uh, he, he doesn't get, he doesn't overreact to things. Helps him as a shot block. Portler with the drive, and he's going to the free throw line. Noah Horkler is a sophomore from Melbourne, Florida. Came to the Ospreys from Eastern Florida State College. The runner-up in the Junior College National Championship. He's got eight. One of the more uh, athletic Ospreys. 40-inch vertical leap. Seven-foot wingspan. But he does not shoot free throws that way, 48%. Dante Porter for three. It'll stay this way, 27 seconds on the shot clock for Missouri. Geis back on the floor, and Harris will get a breather. Terrence Phillips, remember, left in the first half with an injury. We're told he is doubtful to return. Robertson. His third three of the game. He's got ten. Nice play by Porter, but a better feel to find the open spot by Robertson for his open jump shot. Here's Escobar. And no free space to get the shot off Robertson in his grill again. Catches Robertson grew up in Toronto. Went to Canisius to play college ball originally. That's a club for that. There's a dunk by Nickel. Nichols got four. Cassius showed up at Buffalo. I said, man, this is different. This is a small town. I'm from Toronto. I said, you thought Buffalo was small, then you came to Boone County. Here's Porter leading the break. The big fella. Ugh. And over the back on Nico. And what do you say? What did he say to that respect? He said, well, my mom and I had a 14-hour drive down from Toronto. We crossed over the state line. And didn't look like Toronto anymore. How about Nico inside? You know, this is, uh, this is a guy that can be a valuable piece. Uh, he's healthier than he was a year ago. He'll continue to get better, stronger. He's got good foot, good footwork, good hands. One of those guys in the next year or two that you look back and go, I didn't realize he could be this kind of player. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the difference now in this Missouri program is that he'll get time to develop. This yep. is a team with roster turnover that was so strong that in years past, he wouldn't have an opportunity to breathe and to be patient to grow into a role. Jonte Porter going to take it across the timeline again. Extra pass. Porter point blank. It's impressive. Unselfish. Time out taken Ospreys. by the Ospreys of North Florida. Missouri up 56 24. Tigers trying to go to 9 and 2, stay undefeated at home.
This holiday, what are you going to give? Give 30 more seconds on your Peloton. Give it your best morning, noon, or night. Give it up for New York's best instructors live. Give them something to see. Give yourself a thousand other riders to push you to the top. Give them the one thing that will make them give it all. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. I'm not cut out for an office job, so I prefer working in public cafes and in co-working places. Sharing same Wi-Fi spots can lead to some really serious invasions. VPN gives me peace of mind when I use unsecured public networks. NordVPN secures your internet traffic with strong encryption. It offers easy access to hundreds of servers. Get NordVPN for only $4 a month. Visit nordvpn.com forward slash TV now. Wednesday at 7 Eastern, the Dukes look to dull the shine of the newly renovated O-Dome as James Madison tips it off against the Gators in Gainesville right here on the ESPN SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. What is going on with the Gators? First five games, they're 5-0. and They're leading the country in scoring 99.5 points a game, winning games by more than 23 points per contest. Last five, though, they've slipped to 1-4. and four. It's the worst five-game non-conference run since 95-96. Florida lost today 71-69 to Clemson. Jalen Hudson hit 23. Threes weren't a problem today for Florida. It has been an issue lately, but they hit 10 of 24 from deep. You know, a team, uh, obviously a year ago, the lead 18 to defensively, they, they, they hung their hat there. This year, maybe... I had them early in November, and offensively we thought they were a juggernaut, but, but we know there's something going on, and I expect that coaching staff to figure it out. Well, Mike White uh, generally is a defensive coach. Yeah. He wants the defense to lead the off to offense. That's what made him so good offensively, not just last year, but even early this season. I wonder if those struggles are starting on the defensive end. Porter tips it to himself to keep it alive. Blake Harris back on the floor for Mizzou. Here's Geist. Nico inside. He's got a half dozen, four of them in this second half. Aminu. His brothers played at Wake Forest and at Georgia Tech. Al Farouk Aminu then in the NBA with the Trailblazers. trying to create some space and Portland brings it down. And you can see when North Florida goes to their man-to-man -man defense, but they didn't play any of the first half, the size advantage of this Missouri team. Put it inside. Leads 32 for Mizzou. 14-22 to go on this one from Columbia. If you need anything from a simple home repair to a major remodel, you need to know about Home Advisor. It's a totally free service that matches you with background check pros for any home project. You can compare prices, read verified reviews from local homeowners, and book an appointment all online. Start your next home repair or improvement project at homeadvisor.com or download the free app. Home Advisor. My name is Scott Jordan. My problem? I had tons of stuff to carry, but no easy way to do it. So I started Scotty Vest. At Scotty Vest, we make great looking clothing with tons of hidden pockets and unique features. Now, you can carry all your stuff hands-free while looking great. Gadget lovers, use our pockets for your cell phone, charging cables, and even a full-size tablet or laptop. Travelers, breeze through airport security, leave that extra bag at home, and know your wallet and passport are safe. Love the outdoors? Have immediate access to your headphones, sunglasses, even a drink on the go. Never worry about misplacing anything ever again. The uses are endless. Scotty Vest will change your life. Try it out. There are jackets, pants, hoodies, and more. Visit ScottyVest.com right now and browse dozens of styles for both men and women. For a limited time, use promo code SCOTT to save 20% on your first order. What do we make of Missouri's defense? 
Well, you know what? They uh, paid attention to the scouting report. North Florida is a three-point shooting team, and they have been challenged with hands in their face almost every shot. And, and after a while, when they're in your face, sometimes you get open ones, you don't make it. But they have not allowed any of the shooters, especially Escobar and Gandia Rosa, to have open looks. Frustrating night for North Florida, but a good solid effort by this Tiger team. North Florida, 3 of 19 from 3. They're 0 for 4 from 3 in the second half. Gonzo Martin's team trying to stay undefeated at home. It's for taking a 6-0 if they can finish it off. There's a guy in the building that got a big win against Missouri back in the day. Lee Moon is the director of athletics at North Florida. Remember Woody's wagon? Yeah. Remember when the wheels came off? Yeah, I do. I do. He removed the lug nuts. Back in 1985, Lee Moon was the interim head coach of Kansas is. State. And he coached Kansas State to a win against Woody Woodenhofer's Tigers. That was the only win Lee Moon had as a Division I head coach. He was an interim at the time at Kansas State. You didn't think we'd work Woody Woodenhofer <laughs> into the uh, telecast tonight, did you? That I'm was... never surprised when you come home and try to get a name in there. But he took over for Jim Dickey. Ago. Jim Dickey resigned yeah. early in the 85 season for K-State. And that led to Bill Snyder coming in just two years later. Yep. He told us this afternoon, let's make sure I get this right. He is fourth all time. Here's Harris. Fourth all time in Kansas State history for road wins. He was the coach for a portion of a season and he won one game on the road. <laughs> says a little bit about the history outside of uh, one coach, Bill Snyder. Uh, to clarify, that was uh, in Big 8 history, Kansas State's Big 8 history. Okay. There you go. With one. <laughs> Coaching stability is something else, right? Look at Gandia Rosa hitting it. From, think about this Missouri program from... 1926 to 1999, Missouri had a total of four coaches. They've had five since then. Yeah, coaching has changed, uh, and, and not so much. I mean, a couple things, right? Coaches move on because they can. Uh, coaches now have agents that look around. Coaches don't necessarily, but an agent may make a call. Now that see it in football, see it in basketball. Uh, fan bases have less patience than they did in the past. So less job security for head coaches. Tough profession. Escobar for three. A great release. He's a quick shooter. Playing his freshman season at Old Miss. So they had a tough one today. Huh? Yeah, they didn't play well at home. Although I should say, Illinois State's always good. Illinois State put a hundred and one on the Illinois State's 2-0 oh against the SEC this year. They also have a win against South Carolina. Well, I think Illinois State, remember Munson, their coach, or our moment with their coach, was asking uh, people they couldn't get a game. Yeah. And Ross Bjork, the old Miss, said, well, we'll play you. The AD at Ole Miss, we'll play you. It did work out so well. <laughs> What's his basketball th coach think about that right now? Yeah, not so sure. Well, that's another, that, that, that's a guy, oh, Ole Miss has not played well yet. But you get a feeling the way Andy Kennedy coaches that, that they will have, I would say, two or three upsets in the SEC. Uh, Andy Kennedy always gets his guys ready to go. and They've got some holes defensively around the rim. You know, the other team, Tom, that I, I wonder about in the SEC is Vanderbilt. Yeah. They have uh, not, they're a team that with the pieces they have, you expect it to be better early. Not sure if the senior leadership is there at yeah, Andy. Uh, There's Trip Day inside. How about Tremont Waters at LSU? Mm, yeah. A freshman. You know, I was talking Fun to somebody to recently, and they compared him, given his size and his propensity to take over a game in any manner, compared him to Stephon Moody, who used to be at Ole Miss. A guy that could be electric, might be up and down, but can. Yeah, not a, not built, not as 
physically strong. No, but, but, but uh, no. sub six foot. Yeah. His quickness off the dribble. He seems to be able to get anywhere he wants on the court, which with the shiftiness and his size allows for teammates to get open shots. And then he blocked the game tying three the other night against Houston. It's a really good Houston team as Tillman gets some work in inside. He's got double figures. A few losses. Stephen F. Austin today. I saw a freshman today. I don't know if there are any better. Uh, Trey Young at Oklahoma. Good, good, good friends with Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, Wichita State on the road. Hostile crowd always if you go to Wichita. Might have been playing off the home campus. I, I don't know where the game was, yep. but it was in Wichita. Trey Young dominated the game from the start. Rather shooting, passing, stealing. And former Kansas State quarterback, Lon Kruger's doing a pretty good job, huh? Lon, one of the great, great players in Big 8 history. Played the year of the 70s, twice Big 8 player of the year. For Kansas State. I think Oklahoma will challenge Kansas for that Big 12 title that Kansas usually stamps uh, at the start of the year. The trophy. When we return, we'll take a look at the weekend ahead and the SEC will make John Pilatus crystal ball. He'll pick every winner when we return. The 2018 season starts now. When you look at championship caliber teams, you build from the inside out. It's time to rebuild. Take the next step. Dominate college football. Today is just the start of the process. It's time for every team to find out who's in. There's a little more suspense whether you're going to get the guys you think you're going to get or whether you're going to lose them to somebody else. National Signing Day Special, presented by ZipRecruiter. Coverage begins Wednesday at noon on the SEC Network. Hey, think you've seen it all in Razors? Get ready to see shaving in a whole new light. Introducing the all-new Tough Blade Pro, the breakthrough in precision shaving from Microtouch with a laser guide for perfect alignment, a built-in spotlight, and vibrating handle. This isn't just a new razor. This is a better way to shave, period. Fitted with the finest German-engineered stainless steel blades, smart space to rinse out cleaner, and each blade has a micro-thin non-stick coating to help last up to four times longer than ordinary blades. Now, you can have an entire year's worth of shaving, all for just $24.99. Call 1-800-989-6731 or on the web at toughbladepro.com. Or you can text to order. Just text BLADE to 246810. Order right now, and we'll include our lighted micro-touch trimmer free. Tough Blade Pro. See the quality, see the value, and now, see the light. Another big week of basketball in the SEC. Real opportunity for Vandy. They get fifth-ranked Arizona State tomorrow. Bob Hurley's team is off to a great start. North Carolina will go across the mountains and into Rocky Top on Sunday. South Carolina is at Clemson. That's a rivalry game over on ESPN2. Speaking of, Georgia Tech and Georgia's the Bulldogs look to bounce back from the loss to UMass. What a year it's been in the SEC already. And we... Want to look ahead to the postseason this early? What do you think? How many tournament teams could we look at? It's early. Um, I, I think there are six easy. I, I think you get to seven to nine, and the reason I say that is because the RPI is going to be higher. So you're going to have upsets, what we call upsets in the league, but that's going to help teams yeah. that are on the bubble, that have been on the bubble for years, like, like in Georgia or something. Sweet 16, I got four teams today that I think are capable of that. Uh, obviously, Florida's kind of put a dent in, in many people's thoughts. I still think they're a team that will get it right. And when they're right, I think they can play with anybody. A&M, I love what A&M they, They've got balance. They've got size, speed out front. And you know what's interesting about this Missouri team? What would happen if Michael Porter Jr. plays? Changes in a little bit. Well, there wouldn't be any empty seats, number one. <laughs> He's a main on inside. We don't know if he will. Uh, obviously, had back surgery. Uh, he has used social media to kind of entice some Mizzou fans that he might play. Nico, another point blank look for the pass. Hey, you know, talk to Conzo about that today, not necessarily about Michael Porter Jr. returning, but uh, about how this team would look different with him on the floor on the offensive end. 
And the, the focus is, with this Missouri team, if I asked you right now, end of game, end of clock situation, who would you lean on? You could choose a few different people. If Michael Porter Jr. was on the floor, it would be obvious that you would try to isolate him and have the run offense run through him. In big games, in big moments, that's the guy you'd want to have the ball. And, and that's what makes teams different down the stretch when you play the NCAA game. The teams that have an NC, uh, NBA player on the floor usually has a higher chance to win. It's, it's been proven. So if Michael did play, I'm not saying he will, not saying he won't, but if he did, that changes some things, though it, it's difficult to break up what Missouri's doing. But when you've got a guy that automatically gets you 20 and 10 or 25 and 10, there's Michael Porter Sr. on the bench. And there's some guys... Uh, in this league that can do it. How about Colin Sexton at Alabama? Mm -hmm. Actually fun to watch. And there's a team too, Alabama, I think is an NCAA type team. They're still not 100% healthy, but working their way back. Bazan Ingram might be the key to that team because uh, Sexton has shown that he's going to be a guy that can give you points night in and night out. But they really run through Ingram Harris with the takeaway. We know this. Uh, they are sound defensively, Alabama. And there are some nights, though, offensively, they've not found a rhythm. A lot of that comes from outside shooting. Blunt recovers, fires a triple. I think, I think the fun team to, be, uh, to watch outside of this Missouri team this year in the SEC has been Tennessee. Sure. One year older, one year wiser, one year better. Yeah, we knew the Grant Williams, uh, Schofield guys, that we knew what they could do. But how about a Kyle Alexander? He just kind of comes out of the, now he's a much better player than he was a year ago. In flux of talent in this league, continue talking about it after this. I'm the world's greatest Douglas fir. I'm the perfect shape. I'm the perfect color. My scent, like making love to a lumberjack. But halfway home, my twine gets loose. <laughs> and your cut rate insurance might not pay for this. So get all stayed, where you can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an all state agent. Are you in good hands? Shave Butter by Dollar Shave Club. It's going to change your life. Well, the shave part of your life. Try Shave Butter and a razor at dollarshaveclub.com. Every day, there's something new to discover at Hotlook. New brands and new sales. So you can find the style to fit what's on your mind. Start every day with great style at Hotlook. Wednesday's National Signing Day. Dari, Gene, and ESPN National Recruiting Coordinator Craig Hobart will provide wall-to-wall -wall coverage of all 14 SEC schools. Find out where the nation's top football recruits will land starting at noon Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Pace, speaking of recruits and talent and the influx of talent in this league, it is illustrated by the number of top 100 recruits. Kentucky's got seven top 100 players. That was the number two recruiting class. Missouri's got four of them. They finished with a top five class. More top 100 players in the SEC than any other conference in this recruiting class on the basketball side of things. And that's why we're seeing the RPI better, the competition better, the season better overall in this league. Yeah, and it uh, makes for more, uh, better basketball fan bases. Uh, take, take, you know, I started looking at those teams, and we haven't even talked about Arkansas, what they've got going on. The seniors down there, their guard play is terrific. Uh, Mike Anderson's got a team that could compete because of how they play, but they've got that leadership that, that you're always looking for on the floor with veteran players. Trio of seniors lead the way for Arkansas. And another guy, Daniel Gafford, the, the, the freshman who, who well, maybe he's better than they thought he did. He gets better every game. And maybe one of the things that's lacking for Kentucky, every good Kentucky team last few years has had a junior or senior that's got a good This year they're very young. 
uh, playing a lot of close games. It's helpful, but close games against some of the teams that you wouldn't expect it to be close. Well, they beat Virginia Tech today, 93 to 86. I believe John Calipari only played seven players in that game. And that's quite a pace to put up 93 points and only go three deep off the bench. Kevin Knox played 35 minutes. He scored 21. Diallo went for 20. He played 34 minutes. And Diallo hit a couple big threes down the stretch for the issue. It was tight. You know, I, I look at that Kentucky team, and I think um, in years past, you, know, you only have to go back a couple years when they had the platoon system, right? Yep. But he's had guys step up on a daily basis and, and a different star every night. I kind of feel like that's going to be Kevin Knox's team. Well, it may have to be if, if Knox is the kind of player that, that personality wants. Person gets his personality, can he take over and be the dominant player in the offensive end? That, that's not... Sometimes it's, it's not that it's not easy for skilled players, but it's not a natural thing uh, personality wants. Certain guys do it, certain some, some don't. Daniel Lambright with another foul, second on the freshman from Sarasota, so he'll take a seat. Porter with the touch. Nice look. Per year, heading down the lane, couldn't finish. Dante Porter reclassified to join his brother at Missouri this year. Safe to say that he's ahead of schedule in terms of his development, or was this expected? Uh, I saw Jonte play when he was younger, when he they lived in Columbia. Father told him high school, and you know, development-wise, because he's so young, uh, that that's always a challenge with the younger bodies now in the weight room, etc. Uh, always have loved how he plays because there's a poise element there. Doesn't get too bothered, too rough. He's got 10 boards tonight to go with six points. And with Jonte's skill, he can do everything. Shoots well outside. Decent defender, getting better week by week. Challenges shots, block shots because of his reach. Quickness with the hands. Handles the ball well enough. Well, oh, there's not many open. Geis with the board. North Florida team that had won four in a row, and Geis with a three-point chance. Tom, here's what's interesting. Geis with a terrific finish. Comes off of a ball game that he had 28 last Saturday. Career high. He has played tonight not searching for shots. Now, he's not a big scorer, just at eight a game, but when you have 28... Shooting the ball well. He's four of six from the field, right? I mean, he hasn't missed, but he hasn't gone hunting and searching. So what Conzo Martin has built here with this team and all the players is the fact that it is a team. Some nights it's your night, some nights it's not. But give that man credit for what he's building and the squad he's building and different guys on different nights. But, uh, you know, guys, some, some guys would walk out and go, okay, I'm shooting it well, shot it well last week. I hit five threes, where am I shot? Yeah. And, uh, and, he, and he's hitting these four of six tonight from the field. So he, you're thinking, I'm still shooting well. Maybe I should find some other looks. But he has just come in off the bench, been aggressive defensively, been patient on the offensive end, takes what the defense gives him, and one extra pass. Traveling, Porter. Uh, Plenty of black and gold in the uh, Porter household, huh? With the sisters on the women's team here. Sierra, a terrific Bree, who has been injured most of her career here. Sierra, an outstanding player on Rodden Pinchton's team, who is their aunt. A top uh, 20 team, the women's basketball squad. Sophie Cunningham, an all-SEC player. First team last year, preseason first team. A local product from your alma mater, Rockbridge High School. There's plenty of uh, talent in the pickup games around this household, huh? <laughs> well, and Mom Lisa played at Iowa. Dad played at New Orleans, so awfully good. They've got a uh, sophomore son who plays at a local Catholic high school here. She, Lisa didn't just play. She dominated. She was uh, outstanding, yes. Now, that was back in, in 
folks who's won that long ago, but that was back when they played three on offense and three on defense in Iowa High School girls basketball. Michael Porter Sr., first season as an assistant coach on the men's side. He had headed to Washington to be with Lorenzo Romar before that staff shakeup. How about the timing of all that? Uh, quite an offseason for Missouri basketball. It'll uh, go down in Missouri history. One day you hire Conzo Martin. The next day Washington coach gets fired. And you got a family that was homesick, wanted to get back to Columbia where they'd been. Two daughters on the women's team. And family wanted to all be together. But it'll stay this way with six seconds on the shot clock. Let's we'll see where they go to. Dante double figure rebounds tonight. Dad had the scout for this one. I said it, I'd say it was right on. <laughs> they followed it pretty well. He, he, he should remind the other assistants that uh, this was mine. Good luck on yours next week. <laughs> Sound out ice breaks back to Como in a moment. At Regions Bank, we're here to help you move your life forward. But managing money can be tough. That's why sometimes we bring in a little extra help. It's only $1,500. Mm -hmm. I'll use it this time, I promise. Sure. $1,500 for a soon-to-be very expensive doorstop probably isn't the best investment. Exactly. Look, you don't need fancy equipment to get in shape. Check out my personal program at tboflex.com. You should do whatever he's doing. It's free. Check it out. Regions, official bank of the SEC. Like to know how to easily join wood with rock-solid joints? You just need the right tool. With the Craig Joinery System, you create perfectly aligned pocket holes with hidden screws, just like the pros, with a drill and a Craig jig to build any wood project. Bookcases, storage systems, picture frames, and much more. Craig offers a 90-day money-back guarantee. Get your Craig jig at craigtool.com or at these and other fine retailers. Laser X is the ultimate high-tech game of tag. Just choose a team or go rogue. Laser X counts the hits, shows you when to reload, and catches you during play. The new 25-shot long-range blaster features rapid fire and super fast reloading. The new gaming tower features solo, head-to-head, -head, or team modes that will challenge your speed and accuracy. All gear works together. You can get the original Laser X for $49.99 plus free shipping. Batteries not including extra blasters sold separately. Must be 18 years or older to order. Ospreys of North Florida came in averaging 81 points a game, 13th in the country in Temple. They've struggled to knock down shots tonight. They've been led this season by Yvonne Gandea Rosa, who's a sophomore from Caguas, Puerto Rico. Went to Huntington Prep in West Virginia, then College of Central Florida. Gandea Rosa isn't from Caguas proper. He's actually from a rural area just outside of Caguas. And if you've forgotten, back in September, Puerto Rico was decimated by Hurricane Maria. His family was one of millions that lost power. His family home was destroyed. It wasn't destroyed in the ways you might think for a hurricane. He said the windows blew out, the doors blew off, and because of the humidity, everything had to be replaced inside the house because of the mold and the humidity overnight in Puerto Rico. His older brother, who has his own family, is in his 30s, spent the entirety of the hurricane barricaded against their front door and holding it closed so it wouldn't blow off and destroy the entire house. Like, I think roughly about a million still in Puerto Rico, Yvonne's family home is still without power. That hurricane was in mid-September. One of the things that Matthew Driscoll talked about was the fact that he wants his players, like any father would as well, wants the players to know and parents want their kids to know you don't have to worry about us. And so luckily Yvonne got a phone call from his parents. Somehow, some way they were able to call out from Puerto Rico the day after the hurricane and let him know that they were okay physically even though the house had been so severely damaged. Parker, that's a great story. And it, and it shows a little bit of what student athletes go through outside of what people just think. Right? Go to class or go. There's a lot of things that go on. Adia Rosa went the junior college route because he had very few offers coming out of Huntington Prep, even though he was a point guard that played with three different 
high-level Division I players, including Miles Bridges, who's at Michigan State. Dunk down to the dunk, and a flush by Jordan Barnett, who's got 18. 18 points and 11 boards for Jordan Barnett, third career double-double for the product of CBC in St. Louis. Horkler has got double figures now with 10. Harris, they go, jam again. You know, the confidence, uh, obviously Nico has great hands because Harris put that with pace. A lot of times what you learn as a lead guard, especially as a freshman, which guys can catch a ball, how can they handle it, do I have to make a bounce pass, is it a soft pass? He fires it right on the money. Not all assists are measured the same, but we, you can assist on back-to-back -back dunks. You're doing it right. Yep. And so with a 78-47 lead, it's time to feed the wolf. Missouri has brought in Brett Rowell and Adam Wolf off the bench. And Wolf with the, and Wolf with the big three last week. Got it to 100, right? Yeah, got to 100. Crowd on their feet, and more importantly, the bench uh, reaction is priceless. They just welcomed him to the floor as a little Duran Duran, hungry <laughs> like the wolf. 32 in white. These guys will be looking for his shot on the other end. Shot clock is at two. Rao challenged that one. And Harris will bring it down. It's always interesting to see the chemistry with a uh, hodgepodge group like this, right? You got a couple oh, yeah. of guys that are walk on side to play together up to, uh, all the time, every day, and a couple of guys who get starters minutes. So last week, because Phillips, Terrence Phillips, was in the end as a junior, he got Rao a bucket and he got Wolf a bucket. Feed the Wolf! <laughs> I love the bench reaction. Smiles all around the assistant coaches. Three ball from the top of the key, and that one's off. North Florida will track down the miss in a long offensive rebound. Wolf at it again. Here's Harris out front. Got tripped up. And he'll go to the free throw line. We need some t-shirts made. So, so they play Duran Duran, hungry like the wolf, feed the wolf, and look at the response. <laughs> oh, I love it. The esprit de corps with this Missouri team is something we haven't seen in a few years. Yeah. Adam the 10th different player to score for Missouri tonight. Wisconsin native. So he got a bucket. Now does Rao or do they take a look? Try well, you got it. Over. Here it is, right yep. off the baseline, out of bounds. Boom. <laughs> Nico's got a dozen. Been a career night for him from a scoring standpoint. Guys in studio are hard at work all day and all night. Coming up next, SEC now full breakdown of the day's hoops games. Also, really big volleyball game tonight with Mary Wise and her Florida Gators playing for a national championship in Kansas City. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Bucket for Trip Day. He's got a half dozen. You mentioned it earlier. Tough for North Florida. You went four in a row. You look like uh, you've got some momentum going. And now you've got to come on the road in the SEC. There's Rao's bucket. Everybody scored. Meanwhile, for Missouri, they get Stephen F. Austin on Tuesday, 8 o'clock on ESPNU. That is in advance of the Bragg and Rights game with Illinois on the 23rd in St. Louis. And the building's going to have a different feel this year in St. Louis, won't it? Yeah, you know, the Illini have got a solid team. And one of the best events, non-conference events you can have. Half Illini fans, half Missouri fans, St. Louis loves it. Holiday time. 
And SEC tournament will also be in St. Louis this year. Good chance for the Tigers and their fans to get in that building early. Missouri 6-0 at home this season after dropping 10 of their last 12 at home last year. Conzo Barnes team is down 9-2. Top 5 strength of schedule. Top 5 RPI. Time now to get you back to the studio. Once again, the final score here in Columbia. Tigers take care of business 85-51 for John Sunfold and our entire SEC Network crew. I'm Tom Hart. Good night from Columbia. SEC now is next. 85-51 winner, winner. We'll get way to end the day here on SEC Network. Peter Burns, Antoine Walker, Jimmy Dykes. You guys are both wrong. You, I asked you to give me a prediction before the Missouri game, and you both told me, ah, okay, it'll be kind of a win. That was impressive. There was no doubt about it. Uh, Antoine, what would you see in that one that really kind of stood out? Well, obviously the ball sharing early on um, was really good. to get nine players going double figures. But then the defense was great, especially in the first half. Just really shut them down, held them to seven field goals total in that first half. Just coming in focused, Didn't, not losing focus on what they've been doing. They've won. They've now they're putting together a nice win streak right now, but heading to conference play. Can't wait to see you on Tuesday night against, you know, obviously <laughs> Stephen Austin. That's going to be a great contest for them after they beat LSU today. But just solid performance. And then the second half coming out, taking care of business. I'll, I'll put on something nice for you Tuesday night. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look forward to seeing me. I, I really like this Missouri team. Yeah. There, there's teams in this league right now that aren't ranked. Missouri, Arkansas. Auburn that are really, really good basketball teams and, and playing well. Uh, Missouri's not going to go away, guys. This is not a team that we're going to look up in February and they're going to be down there at the, at the bottom in three or four in the league. They're a good team. They share the ball. they got great chemistry. They defend their tails off. They rebound the basketball. They're just, they're just as John Sunville likes to say a lot, they are solid in about yeah. every area. They kind of remind me, and, you know, there's a couple of teams, too. Missouri's gotten better. Tennessee's gotten a little bit better. These teams that overall, there's really not a whole yeah. lot of weakness in, in, in the Missouri Tigers right no, now. No, and, and well, the question mark I think a lot of us had uh, back when the season began, other than Michael Porter Jr.'s injury, was the point guard play for Missouri. But you look at those four kids that are running the point, yeah. they all have about a two-to-one assisted turnover ratio right now. It's a different guy every night. Geist had 28 the other night. Robertson can score. Uh, they're just, uh, you know, if they continue to... Make that's a, real quick, plays. that's got to be super helpful, too, that you don't just have one guy. Because now, all of a sudden, you've got two or three guys that, that are getting that can an handle opportunity it for you. to do it. Yes. Right. The, the point guard play and their ability to continue to get on the glass is why I, I trust Missouri as much as anyone in the league. 85-51. The glasses, they dominated the glass today. It's crazy that you say that. They went by 20 on the glass today, so Ooh. that holds true. That's one of the reasons why they won 85-51. And then joining us right now is the head coach of those Missouri Tigers, Conzo Martin. Conzo, looking at the, the box score, we see five players over in double digits. It's a big blowout win, but you were there coaching those guys. What impressed you the most out of your team tonight? I thought we'd maintain a level of energy uh, and focus because oftentimes when you get leads like that, you let them slip. But I thought we uh, hung in there, uh, stayed, stayed relatively focused. We got loose there offensively, but I thought we did a solid job. Conzo, Jimmy Dykes, uh, congratulations. I, I, I'm very impressed, Coach, with how relentless your team is on the glass, and you dominated again tonight, 52-31. to 31. Talk about that just a little bit for me, please. Well, we spent a lot of time in that area, you know, blocking out uh, and do a lot of breakdown drills, whether it's with bags, without bags, 5-on-5, 3-on-3, 1-on-1. And just to understand, it's not so much our big guys getting every rebound. Our guards have to do a good job of chasing rebounds. And, and we kind of challenged Jordan Barnett, and he's done a tremendous job in the last three or four games of really rebounding the basketball. Because our, our bigs are around the rim, but you know how the game is played now. You have bigs on the perimeter. You're switching different things. So they're not getting rebounds like they used to 15, 20 years ago at that level. So our guards have to do a great job of chasing balls. And, and, and I think they like playing with each other, and they like playing for each other. Coach, Coach Antoine Walker here. Um, Really want to ask you a question. 11 games into the season now, where do you really think your team is at now? I know obviously you don't have Michael Porter Jr., but right now at the 11 games and after this solid win tonight, where do you think your team is at? I think we're a good team. Obviously, there's plenty of work to go because this is, this is my 11th game coaching this team, so it's not as if I've been in three or four years. So it's 11 games, and I think we're making strides. We continue to get better. We show a level of toughness a level of focus, and we continue to fight for each other. And that's the one thing we talk about. Battle for your teammate is the most important thing. Don't worry about who gets the accolades, who gets the points. Let's see who get the most stops. Let's see who get the most rebounds. All those things that, that means winning games. And I, I'm just happy for our guys that they, we got nine wins. We continue to plug on. And, and again, it's a lot of work to get done. 
continue to take care of the basketball. I thought we had some good looks tonight, but it's just fun to be around them. And it's fun to cover. Coach, uh, congratulations on the W. Enjoy the rest of the season, all right? Thank you guys for having me. There it is. Gonzo Martin, 85-51, those Missouri Tigers, another winner. Uh, again, this is another example, guys, where this conference t tends to get stronger and stronger. Missouri Tigers were not one of those teams that were strong last year. They've gotten a whole lot better real quick. Yeah, they really have. It's the, the influx of talent that he has. Uh, the, the tenacity that they play with, the toughness. You look up tonight, they had 19 assists, only 12 turnovers. Uh, Conzo, as you can get the feel talking to him, he's a no-nonsense guy that has firm... You think? Firm, <laughs> very, very I, remember, firm. I, remember, I remember interviewing when he first got the job, Coach, and I'm right. sitting there going, Coach, congratulations. How excited are you? But well, we got to get to good work. Yeah, yeah. And that's just who he is, that, and that, I love that, that demeanor. That's who he is, but uh, he, he has instilled that in, in his young guys in terms of their toughness, how they attack each day, they wake up with a plan, they have great discipline in the program, and you see their remaining schedule. That's not going to be an easy game Tuesday night. Yeah, that says we, 90% we saw Stephen F. Austin I don't know about today. That. Yeah, I don't know that about that. <laughs> who, put that who put that deal together? Yeah. Yeah, 90% chance of beating Stephen F. Austin. I, I, I think they'll be favored, but it, they're not going to beat them 9 out of 10 times, not from what I saw today. Well, I yeah. think you look at the point of emphasis that, that he's talked about kind of stands out the rebound and he says he's focused in on that yeah. and yes. I think that's that's important and they win by 20 plus on the glass tonight then obviously the unselfishness you talk about the 19 assists to 12 turnovers he talks about guys not wanting individual accolades yeah. it's funny now when you got you got Michael Porter Jr. out you know could, could have been a little bit more individual guy who got who's got some obviously some tremendous pro potential but he's got guys now that are sharing the basketball and you got to remember the three guys that he's kind of building around and, and kind of looking for their leadership They've been around the last couple of years where it hasn't been good, so they're going to buy in. And you see these young guys buying into them, too, as Real well. Real quick, uh, you know, not to get Sports Talk Radio on it, but, hey, we're, we're having some fun here on the SEC Network, and we can do that right now. For this Missouri team, Michael Porter Jr., let's say he does get back, yep. and, and the back is better, and he's there. How does how does Conzo handle that? Coach, you've, you've been in that situation before. Sure. How, how do you handle a star player Getting into where the team's playing actually pretty good right now. Yeah, I think Hans is going to, first of all, we don't know if he's going to come back. If he does, but, right. but if he does, let's say that he comes back in February, he's, he's released and he's ready to roll. I, I think you have to make very certain that Michael Porter Jr. fits into how this team has played for three months without him. Because the ball stuck. It's not, a, it's not a complaint or negative against Michael Porter Jr. He's a kid that grew up taking 24, 25 <laughs> shots a game. That's who he is. Yeah. Missouri doesn't do that now. The ball moves. The ball is shared. They play hard. They play together. All five guys are, in, are defending as one. Michael Porter Jr. has to fit into who Missouri is as opposed to Missouri fitting into who Michael Porter Jr. is, mm. if that is to be the case down the road. I think most kids, and obviously I don't know Michael Porter Jr. Um, very well, but you would think if the team is doing well and they're on their way to doing something very special, he would want to just fit in. Right. You know, hopefully that's his mentality to be to come in and just fit in. His pro status and where he's going to go once college is, is, is already kind of written in stone. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what number he goes, no. if he's healthy. So I think he'll understand that. I think he'll want to fit into what they got going on. And Conzo Martin, like we talked about being a no-nonsense coach, he's not going to let them disrupt that because they worked so hard to build this program back up. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're Michael Porter Jr. and you're seeing Jonte just having fun, this team's winning and saying, sure. hey, maybe there is a role right here if he becomes healthy enough to go ahead and play. We yep. look forward to that. 85-51 uh, Missouri wins. There was a lot of basketball being played in this conference. Let's go ahead and show you what else went down, especially with those Kentucky Wildcats, eighth-ranked Kentucky, currently taking the fewest number of three-point shots in the Coach Cal era. And not today, Antoine. They heard what you said. You must have texted Coach Cal. Is that what nah, happened? I just want them to shoot the wide open ones. I mean, I, I don't... And make them? Well, I want, obviously you want them to make them, but they got to start taking them. You got to get some diversity to their offense. Obviously, we know how good they is inside, but they got to be able to, to make some three-point shots. Well, they were getting it done. Kentucky would be up to... They had five players at least, one three-pointer in the first half, but don't poke the hokey. Virginia Tech, Jimmy, you like this squad. I think they're going to finish in the top three or four in the ACC. They're a high-octane offensive team. Has a very strong will to win. Buzz Williams is an outstanding coach, motivator of men, all those things. Kentucky's defense today was terrific. Their, their ball movement was good. Virginia Tech had a great defensive scheme. Anytime a Kentucky player had it on the perimeter, mm -hmm. they saw three maroon jerseys. So what did Kentucky do? They took what the defense gave them when they had oh. open threes. They knocked them down. Diallo is really becoming a very, very good two-point-of-the-floor guard on the offensive end. 
Kentucky gets it out, and they are starting to pull away 65-60. Under five minutes of play, Diallo, good ball movement. That's what we were talking about. Out uh -huh. to the wing. It looks good coming yeah. off of his hand. Yeah. Doesn't it? It really does. Look like he can shoot it. Just got to start taking them more yeah. and shooting them with confidence. And that's what games like this will do for you, too. Yeah. Well, one thing I like about P.J. Washington, we know that he's a big that can play, play some defense, also has good eyes, too. We saw that pass. I, I think that's impressive. Giallo knocks down a three. Kentucky knocks down 11 of them in the game. Wildcats go on to win 93-86. They made season-high 11 three-pointers against the Hokies. Prior to the day, they were one of two SEC squads that hadn't eclipsed 10 trays in a game so far this season. 35% of their points came on threes. Prior to today, only 17% of their points came on threes, which ranked them, like you said, second to last out of all D1 teams. Good win for Coach Cal and the Cats. Well, there's only one John Wall. I want to tell you, there's only one Anthony Davis who has one eyebrow. I mean, there's only one of the... the these kids are good, really good players and are going to have professional careers. They are. I don't know who's watching them to think they're not. Um, and they're all 6'9", and 6'10", and 7' foot, and head on the rim. No, nose on the rim. I mean, yeah, they may not have this, but what they have is special and sets them apart. The question becomes, when we're fatigued, how do we play? Do we learn how to win in close games? That's why this game was important for us. Important game. How much you buy into that? Uh, a game before the holidays. It's not UCLA. It's not Kansas. It's Virginia Tech, who you think is good. But how important was that game for the Cal? I, I think Cal had his team's total attention on this ball game, uh, coming off of a break and understanding how good Virginia Tech is. All you got to do is watch the film on them for 30 minutes, and and you understand we're we have to play really hard today. First of all, because Virginia Tech plays with a lot of gas. Um, Cal's still trying to figure out how to coach his team. Looking at his. Uh, comments after the ball game. Uh, how much zone are they going to play? How much 2-2-1 two, two, press are they going to really use? It was effective for them today. 25% no. of the possessions that Virginia Tech had in this game ended in a turnover. And you heard John talking about the length of his team. They're not, not always getting steals, but it's a deflection. It's a disruptive pass. It's things that they can do with their defense. They sent a message to the league today, the SEC, that you can't shrink the court on us defensively and beg us to make threes because they proved today Finally, they can right? do it. Yeah. They're going to need some mul multiple games before teams <laughs> stop shrinking in on them. <laughs> they're not yeah, sold they're on the court yet? Much. No, they, they're going to they're gonna need some multiple games. That, but what, one thing you got to love about this, and I, I love what Coach Kyle said in his press conference, is the closeness. The game, the game was close, mm -hmm. and they made the right plays. You see them getting the layup with 135 left, a backdoor layup. Obviously making the right pass. P.J. Washington making a nice pass mm -hmm. over for a wide open three. I think that's more important because this team does not have that one guy that you can point out and say, hey, go get me a bucket. They right. do it by committee. So it's important how they finish games. They're going to be in some, with the SEC being as good as it's going to be this year, it's going to be some dog fights. Mm. You got to be able to make some plays late in games. So that's what made this game really important. And their second half defense was terrific. Mm -hmm. They gave up seven threes in the first half, but only gave up three the second half and really locked in. Kentucky of 2017 would play Kentucky of 2016. Right here, right now, Antoine. What's a, what's a better squad? I like the team from last year still. Okay. I just think when you when you talk about two lottery picks, and obviously really three lottery picks, I'm sorry, three lottery picks, and what we saw DeAndre Jordan and Malik Monk do throughout the season, how they got better and better, mm -hmm. and especially De'Aaron Fox, the way he played, was, was amazing. So I just think right now you're still trying to figure out who's going to be that guy for Kentucky. We don't know yet. I still think one of those guys could emerge a little bit. You know, obviously Kevin Knox has been that one guy because he's been the one guy who can extend the floor and make a three-point shot. But it's still, we still need one guy to step up to who it can go to. And late, it's going to come down to that as the, the competition gets stiffer. I, I, I like last year's Kentucky team better offensively. I like this team's potential better defensively okay. because of their Bye. size, their overall length. And they have guys that are a little bit more wired to play on both ends. Okay. Monk wasn't always the most engaged defender. Fox wasn't sometimes the most engaged defender. I, I think Cal has driven home from day one. If we're going to get all the way to the final four, he's told his guys from day one, we have to be outstanding as a defensive team and outstanding as a rebounding team. And you're starting to see Not that. just a scoring Not team. just a scoring team. And I'm not sure he ever got those guys last year to buy into that message like I think this team's going to do. Yeah, uh, one of the reasons why Kentucky is eighth in the country right now, good yeah. win over Virginia Tech. Another team that was in action that has gone back and forth, some good, some bad. That was 22nd ranked Florida playing Clemson in Sunrise, Florida. And it was...